Welcome everyone to this edition of the Wayback Tech. On this episode we go and take an ordinary HP server and turn it into a retro gaming machine. Plus we find out what do modern PCI bus video cards do with Quake 3 benchmarks. That and more coming up next right here on the Wayback Tech. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed our two 3.6 gigahertz Intel Xeon 604 processors. And this heatsink came out of a Dell Precision 470. I used the uh, plastic retention mechanism that Dell uh, had in that computer. Uh, I had to modify it ever so slightly, but it works perfect in this motherboard. Uh, I do have a second copper heatsink coming. But I'm not sure which one of these is actually working better right now. Uh, I, maybe I should have actually ordered one of these. I'm not sure. Um, the fans just kicked up there, so I'm going to scoot this back a little bit. Um, so I've got uh, three gigabytes of DDR2 uh, ECC memory. We're running an NVIDIA GeForce 8400GS uh, Sound Blaster Live 5.1. And then the uh, original SAS slash SATA RAID controller, which is an Adaptec controller, and a 250 gig SATA drive. Uh, this is a HP ML 150 G2 server box. So now I'm going to run a Quake 3 benchmark for you, and uh, I found some interesting results with this. Okay, to start off this benchmark, I was looking at the uh, maximum PC from June of 2000, and I spotted something rather interesting. They go through this whole thing about Quake 3 and whether AGP is better than PCI and what takes advantage of it and blah blah blah. Well this got me to uh, consider what does a PCI uh, video card do with Quake 3 now if you have just like overkill processor power. Obviously the PCI bus would become the uh, limiting factor at that point. It's uh, interesting to see what the frame rates are here. Let me just go ahead and zoom in on this here a little bit. So, uh, as you can see, Quake 3 at this time uh, ran about uh, 42 frames a second at 6.44 on PCI bus. I'm not focusing on the AGP because I'm not running AGP on this. Um, 25.9 at 800 by 611.5 in uh, 1024, and four and a half frames a second in 1280. Wow. Um, what caught my eye is this little post right here that apparently Quake 3, due to the way that it handles uh, texture traffic and, and command traffic, it says here that NVIDIA told these people that Quake 3 will never uh, suffer from bus limitation. Well, we're going to find that out. But I want you to see this because I ran the Quake 3 bench already and it's pretty impressive numbers that I got. So let's see that right now. Alright, so I'm running Windows XP on this computer. And just to show you that it is a 3.6 gigahertz with 3 giga RAM. And we are running dual processors with which are hyper threaded. So Maximum PC ran this particular benchmark back in June of 2000 with the Quaver demo. And you can still find this demo online if you Google Q-U-A-V-E-R uh, demo. Uh, you'll come up with a download for it. And it'll have instructions inside on how to uh, get this to run. Pretty simple, actually. Um, they run it with, uh, let's see here. Texture set to high and ge geometry set to high. 
And they don't say what color depth they're running. So I'm running 32-bit, trilinear, mitmap, everything is pretty much maximum at each resolution here. Interesting, if you change this to a vertex, it jumps up about 10 or 20 frames a second, but this is good for us. So everything's still set. So let's run this, and I'm not turning the sound off because there's so much processor power that the sound being on or off really doesn't affect the frame rates all that much. It's like a half frame per second, so let's just see what this does. Hundred and thirty frames a second. Um, back then, uh, they got uh, forty-two and a half frames a second at six forty by forty. This is doing one hundred twenty-nine point nine. Now I don't know uh, what processor they were running, but yeah, it does say they were running thirty-two bit textures, so uh, that's good. Um, but um, Obviously, they're probably running a Pentium 3 of some sort, maybe an AMD Athlon. Um, so this is roughly three times faster than that. So let's go ahead and kick up the resolution a little bit here. Hundred and twenty-four point eight. So back then they got twenty-five point nine. Now they were running a TNT two PCI video card. They don't say if it was a TNT two Vanta or what it was. They just say TNT two PCI. So now let's kick it up another notch. Let's just go ahead and go to 12.8. Let's skip 92.6. At 1280 by 1024, they were getting 4.3 frames a second. That's a significant difference. That's a huge difference. So let's run it without sound. makes a little bit of a difference but really not a whole lot. Ninety two point nine. See I'm doing exact same frames per second. So this is an interesting question. Is the PCI bus a limitation or is the 8400GS a limitation? I'm kind of curious about that.
Uh, I do have an adapter coming that I'm going to put the 8400 GS PCI onto the PCI Express bus and see what it does. I'm kind of curious to know, but it's kind of interesting to see uh, where PCI video cards have come since night or since the year 2000, <laughs> because it's a it's amazing, especially at 1280. Uh, I mean that's 20. 25 times faster. So, thought I'd just share that with you guys.